the 10th anniversary of your graphic novel, The Alcoholic. That's right. It's coming out under uh, Dark Horse, under the Burger Books imprint. Burger Books imprint, that's right. What's it like going back and revisiting uh, a title that you worked on? Because the comics industry is such a constant churn of creation. Does 10 years give you ample time to sit back and say, wow. Well, I nice mean, job. a lot. <laughs> well, yeah, true. Nice job, man. I was, always, I was excited by what we did 10 years ago. But also, I feel like my star has risen a little bit. Definitely Jonathan Ames, the star, the writer, has risen a lot. I mean, he did Bored to Death for three years at HBO. He uh, produced uh, and created Blunt Talk for stars, you know? So a lot more people know about Jonathan Ames. When the book came out 10 years ago, I was really excited by that because, mm -hmm. you know, Vertigo was one of the progenitors of the indie kind of memoir-type comics, as well as Sandman and everything else. Sure. But I don't know if the industry was ready for it yet. You know, I mean, I think back then you'd see a book like The Alcoholic come out from like Fantagraphics or Drawn in Quarterly, you know? So, I mean, it got some nice play, you know? But I think now, 10 years later, it'll get more play because of that. And it is really cool to revisit. Uh, uh, Jonathan Ames also wrote a, an original essay for uh, an additional thing for the book. And then I drew something. And I just think, you know, it's a topic also that is, is evergreen, you know, like it's people true. drink, people have problems, they have issues. And I think this is a really good book that addresses a lot of that, not only uh, seriously, but with a lot of levity as well, so. Another book uh, in your au uh, The Red Hook. <laughs> it's painfully relevant today. One, what the hell were you seeing in the world around you that inspired that? I'm an artist living in Brooklyn. It's really difficult to do that. I mean, my entire life, it's always been a struggle to be an artist in a major city like New York, even though uh, that is a lot, you know, first of all, I'm born and bred there, so I wouldn't know otherwise. But, you know, it, it, a lot of people Yeah, the Midwestern would never have been able to come up with, with, with <laughs> this concept and the individual names of some of the characters. Right, well, I mean, we have such great neighborhood uh, names. You have to turn those into characters the as The well. Green Point. The Green Point, the <laughs> Coney, the Sheep's Head, uh, the Flat Bush. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of fun characters you can play with. But uh, as a struggling artist, and, you know, the, 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 the rent rises and everything becomes more expensive, but you know, the page rates don't get bigger, you know? Um, the yield uh, financially of doing comics, you have to do it because you're sure. impassioned by it. I mean, you know, a lot of people that go to, uh, um, what do you call it, like comic book colleges, which we have now, which we didn't have when I was a kid, sure. they come out thinking, okay, I'm gonna get a job, I'm gonna make a lot of money at this. I'm like, I don't know about that, you know? I mean, you really have to do it because you want to, because you have to. But with that in mind, that means I'm, I'm sharing studio spaces where I have about this much space to create a universe, and then the people next to me are all doing that as well. And then we, the, the spaces shrink and shrink because of rising rents mm -hmm. and you know landlords coming in or real estate developers buying out spaces and doing nothing with it. You know, uh, I was saying how uh, New York City is no longer underwriting the avant-garde anymore, and that's where we get a lot of our no, really pricing it out. Exactly. So like. One of my studio mates moved to Philly, another person moves back home, another person moves into their closet, you know? And so I think I was reacting a lot to that with Brooklyn, and I looked at Brooklyn, and a couple things happened. Uh, there was a stunt pulled by German artists uh, in 2014 where uh, they replaced the American flags with white flags, and I thought to myself, and we didn't know that for a week. So when, they, when the white flags came up, I went, oh my God, Brooklyn gave up. It just threw in the towel, you know? And then I thought about that. It's like, what would that look like if Brooklyn was sentient, you know, and was reacting to the world, the toxicity of what's going on? You know, and we're talking about a few years ago, not today, which is even more relevant, you know? Right. And I thought, well, you know, Brooklyn is about as big as some small country, so I felt like she could sustain herself. And then there's this pandemic of like this cosmic pandemic of new heroes and villains. And then I would tell stories with some of those characters okay. with the background being the secession that happens. You have uh, two sequels in, in the works, right? War Cry? War Cry. And Star Cross. And Star Cross, that's right. Uh, is this series uh, cathartic for you in a way? I mean, all writers put some of their own. Absolutely. Feel, uh, you know, some of their own into each. Series. I would even hazard its memoir. <laughs> even though it's superheroes, people hopping around, you know, it's absolutely cathartic. And something that I learned from reading old Jack Kirby comics or Steve mm -hmm. Ditko or Jim Starlin or Howard Chaik and Walt Simonson, when you start to put out like absurd, crazy ideas, they start to come back at you, you know, maybe in, in different forms, mm -hmm. but I always use Star Trek as an example. Like, you know, Star Trek comes out in the 60s, right? And even though they've evolved into this, we did get flip phones 
you know? And things start to happen. So if you put out really cool ideas. Crink was the OG with the flip phone. The OG of the flip phone, absolutely. I mean, come on. So, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. I realized that you put it out there and it may come back at you in positive ways.